All right, you guys, we're going we're gonna to try this again. Uh, so Sergeant Nick Ryan's here uh, with uh, this week's episode of uh, The Ranks Report. Um, before we get started, let me, I'm going to refresh my page really quick on my computer to hopefully see your guys' comments um, as they come in. Um, all right, perfect. I think we're, we're, I think we're good now. Uh, I actually just tried to go live before and it, uh, I don't think it was working right. So, um, the title of this episode is the four marketing strategies that don't involve Facebook. Now, before I get into what I'm going to be teaching, uh, what I want to cover with you is you definitely should be doing marketing on Facebook. If you can afford it, if it fits into your marketing budget, I highly, highly suggest that you are still marketing on Facebook. But marketing on Facebook is not the, the, you know, the only thing that you should be doing. There's a combination of different marketing you should be doing. Facebook is one of them. Um, like for ourselves, I, mean, I would say 70 to 80% uh, of our business actually comes from... Uh, Facebook marketing, so a lot of it, uh, but uh, my business is a little bit different than yours. So my business is a, is a B to B business. Your business is a B to C business. So you know, uh, business to business or business to, to customer. Um, so it's a little bit different. Um, so if you can afford Facebook marketing, um, if you can, uh, you know, battle it out with them without be getting too frustrated with them denying ads and all that kind of thing, definitely do it. Uh, but we're going to cover some strategies today that you should definitely be using um, as you know, as well as, as your Facebook marketing. So the first one is text messaging. You should definitely be definitely be using text messages somewhere in your marketing. What do I mean by this? Um, you can use text messaging when it comes to uh, reactivation campaigns. Um, you can use text messaging when it comes to basically any promotion that you currently have out. I predict that text messaging is going to be probably the next big platform uh, that we are going to be using to interact with our customers. Because most of us know if you do email marketing or anything like that, uh, are the, the open rate that you have on your emails is usually pretty low. I think the industry standard is like 9% open rate, which is horrible. Um, the reason for that is, is because we as marketers, we, you know, we have flooded uh, our customers' emails with so many emails that they just don't bother opening shit anymore. All right. Um, back in the day when emails were just first getting popular, um, it, it, we didn't have this problem. You know, people, people didn't abuse it uh, like they do, like they get abused now. Um, I know with my emails, when I send out, I mean, I actually have a pretty high open rate. We're anywhere between 20 and 30% open rate, but that's still, I mean, that's only 30% of the people on my list actually getting the information that I'm putting out there. Um, but text messaging is is really um, something that we see is, is gonna be a, a huge, huge platform. Now, a lot of people ask, well, how do I utilize this? Um, I'll give you an example of kind of how uh, some of the elite members used text messaging uh, when it came to promoting their last uh, four week uh, level up challenge. Um, they, if they've used text messaging in the past, then basically all they did was send out a message, text message to all of their potential, um, customers that they have captured their phone numbers or any, uh, previous, uh, clients that used to train with them. And they text message them with, Hey, just want to let you know that we're running a, you know, full week level up challenge that starts next week. They did one more follow up text message to all those people saying, Hey, I just want to let you know this is your last chance. Uh, to sign up for our level up challenge, okay? You might get responses, you may not, but we actually got a really pretty high report from most of the, the facilities saying that they actually got really high numbers uh, responding. Uh, so many people were responding, you know, 100, 100 some uh, text messages they received back. Um, some of them may have not have been great, you know, so some of them may have said stop, you know, text messaging me, but they said a lot of them were people that actually responded to them. Um, so your open rate is usually around uh, you know, 90%, if not 100% when it comes to text messaging. We all know that when you get a text message, we check it. It's not like an email where we can just delete it without even opening it up to see what it was. So that's one way of using text messaging. Um, you can also use text messaging when it comes to a reactivation campaign. So I highly suggest if you haven't done this yet, then after um, this video, I would definitely give it a shot, you know, this week or even next week, is do a reactivation campaign with your old members and do it through text message 
all you need to do is basically send out one text message that says, hey, this is, you know, Coach Joe from Joe's Gym. Uh, just wanted to see, you know, uh, how you're doing. Was thinking about you. Okay, that's it. You're not trying to sell them anything. You're not, you're, all we're trying to do is trying to open up a line of communication with them um, so we can start a dialogue. So a lot of times what you're, what's going to happen is the person's going to text message you back, say, oh yeah, but you know, uh, things are great. You know, I've been thinking about coming back into the gym. Once that dialogue is started, then that opens the door for you to say, hey, yeah, we have this offer going on right now. I think it'd be perfect for you uh, to come back to. Okay. Um, some of them may just reply back like, yeah, everything's great. Then you could say, okay, wonderful. Wait a day. And then you could send them a message talking about whatever offer it is uh, that you may have going on. Now, a lot of people say that, well, well th you know, that may take me a lot of time uh, to do all this. Well, if you don't want to spend the money on marketing, you know, with Facebook and other things, then yeah, the, the only other thing you're going to have for currency wise is your time. But it really doesn't take that long to put a text message together, especially like the one I just said, copy it and then paste, put in the phone numbers going to send, paste, put in the phone numbers going to send. Really, if you sat down and took 30 to 45 minutes, it wouldn't take very long for you to actually bang out those those text messages and man be done. Okay, um, there are text messaging services out there. Uh, like we use uh, fixyourfunnel.com. We use them as our text messaging service. So if you're text message to a lot of people, or if you wanted just a a better platform to be able to text message uh, masses of the mass of people, then they're a great company to look into. To uh, but again, you don't need to. I mean, if you're not tech savvy, if you don't want to learn a new platform, then don't. Just use your phone and text people that way, okay? So just start thinking about different ways um, that you can use uh, the text messaging platform to reach, okay, your clients because that they're going to respond to you hopefully on that one and you're definitely going to get 90 to 100% open rate. So you know, you know they saw your message. They may not respond to you, but you know they saw your message, okay? So uh, next up on my list is uh, local businesses. <clears throat> so this is another um, strategy you can use. Now, I would say it's probably lower on my list than text messaging. Text messaging is probably the, the number one, number two on my priority list when it comes to these, these different strategies. But connecting with local businesses that you can do joint ventures with, it's just another way you can build your business. Now, again, this takes time. Okay, You're not just going to walk into a local business and you know, be like, hey, can I put my flyer up inside your facility? Don't do that. That's the best way to start a bad relationship with a local business. I, I can tell you why, because when I owned my brick and mortar facility, when anybody walked into my gym and that's how they started their conversation, I was like, get the hell out. I don't want to hear anything you have to say. If you come into my gym saying, help me, you know, you want my help, I don't even know you, get out. Um, now, if someone came into my gym and said, hey, how can we help you? then I'm going to listen. I'm, I'm going to see, you know, what, what they have to say. Okay. But if you approach, if you go, if you go straight at, uh, you know, a local business and try to get them to help you, don't, don't plan on them actually, um, helping you out. Okay. So ask how you can help them first. So if that means putting their stuff up in your facility, referring people to them, great, do it. But a lot of times what you're going to see is that the local business has no idea how you can help them. So they're going to say, well, what do you, what do you have? You know, what's, what, what's your thoughts? How do you think we can help? Um, one of the best uh, things that we've seen that works uh, with local businesses is saying that, Hey, we're going to, you know, again, trying to help them out as much as, they, as you can on your side. But if they don't have any ideas, then you can have them uh, refer people to you and they get paid for every referral that they send to you. Okay. So I don't suggest going straight in for this strategy Start a, work, start a relationship with them, invite them in for your sessions, um, just start a relationship with them before actually going at this, going at them with this. But again, once you get the relationship, paying them for their leads works out very well. So um, meeting with the employees and talking to the employees, employees about this, this is very important because most of the time the employees are the ones that actually have face-to-face -face time with these uh, customers. And then if you tell them, hey, we're going to give you a $50 gift card for every um, customer that you refer to us, hey, that's powerful, man. Powerful. Um, I had a partnership with the vitamin shop, and we did this. 
And it was seriously, we got a lot of clients from them, right? So local businesses, but again, it takes time and it's going to take continuing time to make sure that you cultivate that relationship with them. It's not just, you know, a one-time thing you go in and you say, Hey, you know, refer people to me and I give you a $50 gift card. You have to build a relationship. You have to communicate with them. It's just like, you know, family members and your significant others. It takes work to keep the relationship, but it's worth it. Again, you got to put in the time. Um, next one I've got, schools. So connecting with, with your local schools can be a freaking gold mine if you do it right. So most likely you uh, train teachers at your gym. Most likely, uh, shit. Almost every uh, person I coach and I ask them, do you train any teachers? Uh, every single one of them is like, yes, I train teachers. So what you want to do is you want to use them to get in, you get your foot in the door. Um, so what I suggest doing when it comes to schools is put together a special, you know, teacher boot camp um, and make the time usually around like four, like three thirty, four, four thirty, and you know, open up a special time just for them. So you want to open up a time that the teachers can come to your the class basically right after they get out of school. Um, you can open this class up to other people too, but you can label it as you know a teacher boot camp, you know, just for them. Um, now. Once you've done that, now you've got to think about how you're going to market it. So what you want to do is ask your teacher client um, if she'd be willing to put flyers in all of the teacher's mailboxes at the school. Okay, um, And then you put together a professional flyer. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Put together a professional flyer with a picture of that teacher Okay, on the flyer. Maybe a before and after of that teacher. If you have it, that would be awesome. Uh, but you want these teachers to be able to pull this this flyer out of their mailbox and see someone that they know. Okay, this is like, oh, it's a coworker. Okay, you're gonna get way more business if you use this strategy. Now, like I said, let's talk about the flyer. I've seen a lot of people make really shitty flyers. The flyers are a direct representation of how professional your business is. So if you make a shitty flyer, and you print it out on your computer, um, like all black and white and that kind of thing, then don't expect to get much from your flyers, okay? Um, the reason for that is, again, if the, if the flyers look unprofessional, then that's immediately uh, what people are gonna think, okay? Is that, though, this, this is not professional, this company's not professional, not, I'm not gonna do business with them. Same goes for your website, okay? So if you have a website that looks like shit, and it doesn't look up to date, doesn't look professional, people are judging you based on that. We live in the digital age where people don't, you know, just drive into your gym. Most people don't anymore. They check you out online first. They check you out on Yelp. They go to your website. They look how professional it looks. And then they judge you. So just think about that, okay? If your website needs some work, put in the work. And if you're putting together flyers, then make sure that you're putting together some quality flyers, okay? They really, they don't cost that much. We actually just got done putting together flyers for the um, uh, the uh, Bader's, um, uh Fitness Business Summit uh, coming up next month. Um, and we have full page flyers, eight and a half by 11. We got, you know, a thicker card stock on them, full color, both sides. I think it costs for a thousand of them. It cost uh, like 300 bucks. Something like that. So it's really not that much. And again, you don't need a thousand. <laughs> All you need is like 20 or 30 or whatever for the teachers. And it's really not going to cost much. So just think about that when you're trying to connect with your local schools. Okay. If you get in with your local schools, I'm serious. Freaking gold mine. Um, and that brings me up to my next, my next top, my next uh, marketing tip here is uh, setting up booths at local events. This is probably the lowest one on my priority list. Um, just because usually you've got to have a really solid strategy in place to, to maximize these type of events. Uh, we were actually just talking about this in um, a group meeting with my, my top level uh, coaching guys, the unit. And we were talking about setting up booths. Um, some people have great luck with booths. Some people don't have great luck with booths. Um, you could do bridal events. You could do uh, local runs. Uh, you could do local health fairs. Um, there's a lot of different things you could do. If you're going to do a booth, I suggest not doing any that that are over, I would say 200 bucks. 
if they're over 200 bucks, don't do them. You know, you can spend your money elsewhere and, and get a better return on your investment. But some booths are great. Now, the biggest thing with booths is you have to have something that engages your audience. Because if you guys have ever been to a, a show where there are booths and you're the actual member walking around, you know, you know what you're doing. You, you just, you're not making eye contact with these people because you're, you're afraid these, the people at these booths are going to suck you in with their tractor beam. Um, so realize that that's the kind of, that's how people are going to be when you, they're at these type of events. So you need a way to engage these people that, that they're not going to be scared of you. Um, so give something away for free. Okay. So give, give you know, a free week, you know, come, come sign up for a free week. Uh, we, we do pull-up challenges. We do uh, a kettlebell challenge. Again, when it comes to your boost, you got to know who your audience is. If these people are not athletic, if it's not a fitness event, a health event, then don't expect people to actually like do something physical. Um, but just you know, giving them something away for free, a free t-shirt, uh, you know, like I said, a free week, and then them having to um, give you their email address um, for you know, to get the, the offer, that's great. Don't expect to sell your services at the event. Just expect to, um, uh, uh, lost my train of thought here. Um, don't expect to sign people up, but, but use these events to capture leads. And then you can follow up with these leads later on with getting them in for their free offer, whatever that may be. Okay. Um, but don't expect to, to, to make, to get money straight off the bat on these. We're lucky enough. Um, again, like I, like I mentioned, uh, we'll be at fitness business summit this year. Uh, but that one there, that's probably our best show we ever do. Um, the the people that attend that show are just amazing. We usually sign up 20 to 30 gyms uh, just at that show. So for us, you know, the money that we spend, and it's not cheap, okay? Um, the money that we spend to get a boot there, we make our money back probably five times over uh, what we actually spend. So it's well worth um, what we spend at these booths. Okay. So just think about it though. Main thing for you is to get leads at those type of events. Um, so that's my four, but, um, I'm going to cover one more thing with you that actually does involve Facebook and that is doing your Facebook live stuff. Exactly what I am doing right now. What is this costing me? Time. That is all. We have been on here for 20 minutes. It has cost me 20 minutes of my time to just go live and share some ideas with you to hopefully help you and your business. What's stopping you from doing the same thing um, on your page, helping people in your neighborhood? There isn't. Most, most, what usually stops people from going live and doing this kind of thing is fear. Is that they're scared to what if I mess up? I'm live, you know. I mess up all the time. Okay, it's it's fine. And the more you actually get to doing this and and going live and just putting yourself out there for people, the easier it becomes. So don't be afraid to again use this new feature that Facebook has that's free to connect with the your your local audience. You help them out. Okay. Don't try to sell them on this again. Do I, do you have, I don't sell you on this. All I do is I get on here and I try to help you. That is my goal. Okay. Um, so, uh, if you guys have any questions on anything that I went over, please just post in the comments below. Uh, let me refresh my page just to see if we got any questions that came in, but I, I don't, I'm actually on my computer, so it doesn't refresh very well. Um, Let's see, free visual brand leverage. Yep, Jeff, you got it. Uh, Matt, uh, do you recommend going to the Fitness Business Summit? Yeah, man, um, it's a great event. It's a great event. Uh, when it comes to, especially Matt, I know where you're at with your business. Um, no, I think it's I think it's a great event uh, to attend. Um, there's other events out there that, you know, I don't wanna talk bad about some of the other events, but some events really aren't that great for, people that own their own gym, their own thing. Some events are good for like club industry, like, you, you know, the 24 hour fitness trainers. And there's some uh, um, events that are good for, you know, local business owners, stuff like that. So I think it'd be good for you. Um, all right, I think that's about it for questions, but I don't know if my computer's actually updating or not, but uh, yeah. So 
Uh, if you guys have any other questions, you may watch this after I film it live. Go ahead and just comment uh, below with any questions you may have on any of these strategies that we talked about, and I will do my best to answer you and help you out. All right. Until next week, I will see you then.